to have you here this morning. Um, today we're going to talk about anger and whether or not it's okay to be angry. I actually had several people tell me last night, you know, they said I've never thought about angry that anger that way. So I'm going to get you focused on anger, get you mad today. It'll be great. You'll go home. You'll punch somebody. It's going to be a great day. And we're going to help you to deal with anger the right way. Um, so if you went to a job and um, you got to interview your boss. And so you had two bosses maybe that you got to choose, and you get to choose who you work for. And the first guy you go in to see, as you walk in, you can see, you know, he's got one of those big glass windows. And you look in, and he's throwing stuff. He's talking on the phone. You can see spit coming out. His face is red. There's a vein. There's a vein, right? And he's, and he slams the phone down. And you knock on the door, and he says, what do you want? You go in, and you realize he's got an anger issue. And then the next guy you go to see, he's calm, and he invites you in, he's glad to have you. How many of you would like to work for the second boss instead? Anybody in here? All right, so, and now let's, uh, full disclosure, by the way, if you're the boss, you don't have to raise your hand. How many of you have worked for a boss like the first one? How many of you work for that person? Come on, come on now. Really? Only that many? Okay, that's better. Thanks for the honesty. How many of that boss was you? No, I'm not going to. Okay, so <laughs> full disclosure, hey, forgiveness is a good thing. We all forgive you. Everybody we forgive you. Okay, so um, this is becoming an AA meeting suddenly. Um, <laughs> my name is Eric, and I'm not having an outburst of anger for 30 days. Oh, good, you get a chip. <laughs> and throw the chip down. Okay, good. So, so I want to give you some facts about anger. This could be a really bad morning. Here we go. The squirrels are alive. Okay, so I gotta tell you a true story. So the other night, the other night, all of a sudden, uh, uh, I hear boom, and our power goes out, which, you know, I know means transformer. I mean, not for those of you who watch the movie, not the guys that become cars, but your, it means your thing that goes to your house. I heard boom, FPL, three hours, no AC in the summer. Can I tell you what did it? Squirrel. So one of mine apparently got loose and said, you know what, I don't think you deserve air today, and boom. So, um, and then he disappeared. I'm not sure what happened to him. The dogs wanted him, but something got him before the dogs. So there's something in my yard that eats squirrels. That's scarier than the squirrel. So here's some facts about anger. Number one, uncontrolled anger, listen, listen, uncontrolled anger is never okay. Never okay or justified. Number two, guys, this one's for you. Women know this. Women, I hate to tell you, for the most part. Now, I don't, uh, you know, some guys, some of you guys are in touch with your feelings. That sounds really weird. You don't need to tell other guys I'm in touch with my feelings. That's odd. Um, uh, a guy came up to me last night, told me I had a nice beard. I, I don't know if we should be doing that, but that's okay. I guess nice beard. If you tell me I have nice shoulders or something, I, that's too far. Too far. So you don't tell me I'm sad, and don't tell me I have nice shoulders. That's weird. But you can say, hey, your beard looks good, dude. Okay? And by the way, if you say I love you, you have to add the word man or dude. Okay? So if you go up to a guy and you go, man, I, you can say, man, I love you, or I love you, man. But you can't just go up to a guy and go, I love you. That's just, <laughs> just weird. Just give me some dude facts there. So, but guys don't always know how they feel. And here's what you need to know. Your anger is, is from something else. There's no typically. It's from something else. You, you're feeling a certain way because of something else. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Number trace, that ace. Anger can be to gain control or fear, feel powerful. And I'm going to give you two words to illustrate that. Here they are. Deadly as catch. That's exactly what Deadly as catch. And, and if you pay attention, here's what I've noticed because I've watched Deadly as catch a lot. I'm not watching this season. I'm sorry. Forgive me. It's just not on my bucket list right now. But um, if you watch Deadliest Catch, uh, you'll notice that when they uh, want something done quickly, it usually involves anger and lots of beeps. Beep, beep, beep. I'm assuming that maybe the guys do say beep. I don't know. It looks like they're saying another word. And, um, but what are they doing? They're trying to gain control. The other thing I've noticed, though, is this. There's one specific boat that anger happens a lot less. And I've noticed that guys who were on other boats want to work on that boat. And overall, that boat is more productive. I have noticed that. 
We need to do a survey. Maybe one of you are doing a doctoral study, and you can do it on anger on Deadliest Catch. There you go. Number four, anger towards ourselves becomes depression. Some of you are mad at yourself because you feel like a failure. You focus on something you didn't do right, some failure that you had, some failure in the past. And if you're not careful, if you don't learn to forgive, ready, ready, you, then you'll turn it inward. And you'll struggle with depression. It's not the only reason for depression, but it will become depression. Number five, anger about injustice is natural and can be healthy. Hear me. Some of you have never heard that before. There's an anger that is for the good. It means that you see something unjust happen and it makes you mad. Now, you can respond improperly to that anger or you can take action. Here's the thing. They discover that anger actually releases chemicals into your body that cause you to want to get close to someone. <laughs> It gives you courage, right? You want to come close to them. You understand? And you want to punch them in the right, right? And so you're driving, and you want to come close. To, just, just close, just close, right? Okay, so that's why they make bumper cars, and I think they ought to have a lane for bumper cars, but that's another story. So anger makes you want to draw close, and here's the deal. If you channel that the right way, it will actually drive you to do something about the injustice you see and do the right thing. So you see that children are being hurt, or you see some, and you say, you know what, I need to be a part of helping in that. You, you see something unjust happen to somebody, or, or a racial group, or a group of people, and you say, I want to be a part of, how can I now do something? I feel this anger. I know that it's wrong. How can I do something about it? By the way, that's godly anger. Godly anger leads to helping people, and godly anger is typically out of, you're empathizing, you feel for somebody, and it makes you mad because you realize how unfair that is. And you step up and you do what's right. Number six, all anger must be dealt with properly. You knew I was going to say that one. All right, I made this up this week, and I like it. So you don't have to like it, but here it is. Rapid reactions ruin relationships. Most of the dumb decisions you made, most of the things that right now you wish you could take back, you made quickly. You made in a moment. You reacted. And you can mess up your life that quickly. Listen to what it says in Scripture. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen. Slow to speak. And slow to become angry. So you say, Eric, you're a little slow. I hope so. In anger. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. So here's our theme for today. And I'm going to give you a thought. I should have brought a gas can with me, but I was afraid that it might have gas in it. And yeah, that wouldn't be good. Okay, so you can just pretend. I planned this week before the rain, and we didn't get to cut the lawn early enough, and the yard looked bad, so I wasn't going to, I was going to video my front yard, and then I was embarrassed, so I'm prideful, apparently. Uh, anyway, so here was my plan, and, and I was going to take a gas can and videotape me going into the front yard and saying to you, I have been cultivating this grass. I've been working on it. And people are in my small group are like, hey, it's looking better, man. You're, you're getting it. You're, you know, you've poisoned, and Trace is not here, so I can use the word poison. I've organically controlled pests. Anyway, so, no, no, I've killed them with whatever they would die from. I, there's a point that I'm not an environmentalist. For just a moment, I'm like, it's my yard. Don't get in the water, but I'll kill you. Grubs. Anyway, so, so I've, I, and I was going to show you the grass and then say, I've been cultivating this. And then I was going to take the gas can and pour gas on my yard. And last night, when I said that, people went, oh! <laughs> and I was going to fill the gas can with water just to mess with you, but um, I poured it on my yard. But all of you know that would be foolish. Why, why would you work so hard to cultivate and help the grass to grow and then pour gasoline on it? You ready? Why would you work so hard to have relationships in your life 
Why would you work so hard to help people to feel loved and accepted, and feel grace in your presence? And then with one moment of anger, just pour gas all over it. And that's what anger does. Anger destroys. It can destroy years and years of cultivating. Most of you remember a time in your life that maybe a parent said something to you out of anger and you still remember it. But here's what I want you to remember. Here's the, the sermon in a sentence. God wants to help you respond to anger the right way. You've cultivated these relationships. Hopefully, maybe you haven't. You're working on it. Okay, that's next. And, and you cultivated these relationships and maybe for some of you, you know you've poured gas on a few relationships. Well, what we're going to talk about today should help you to reestablish those relationships, just like grass. Listen, if you don't cultivate grass, feel free to come by my house and look at my neighbor's yard. I have a neighbor who's decided that grass doesn't matter. In Miami, there's a great yard. They just poured concrete on it, and they bronzed a, uh, a push mower. Did you ever see that down in Miami? It's down in Cor Coral Gables. They, they, they cemented the yard, and they bronzed a push mower right in the middle no more mowing. We're done, right? And, but in relationship, you can't pour concrete on it. And if you don't cultivate it, it will die. If, you're, you, if you have a relationship with anyone, you've got to worry. If, you're, if you want to be friends with somebody at work, you can't just count on what you did in the past. It has to constantly be maintained. Just like grass, guys. Come on now. You can't let the weeds grow. You've got to watch out for those pests, right? And, and those things that sneak in. But the worst thing you can do is pour gasoline on a relationship with anger. You can destroy what you've built for years and years and years. So how do we deal with anger biblically? Number one, recognize your anger. Now this may sound weird to you, but I cannot tell you the number of people that have come to see me and as they talk they go, and then what happened is what she did is, is then she uh, and then she goes, and you know what he did? And then he, and I go, whoa, whoa, why are you guys so angry? And this is what I get. We're not angry. Really? You're not? Then you just had your mouth wired shut for a few minutes. <laughs> Proverbs 29.10. By the way, Proverbs has a lot to say 3,000 years ago about anger. A fool gives full vent to his anger. By the way, this is David's son who wrote these. David's son had a spear chucked at him, and David's son knew that his boss ended up losing his kingdom because of anger. A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. It doesn't say that a fool has anger. Everybody has anger. But it says that a wise man, even when he's angry, keeps himself under control. And listen, you cannot blame others when you're out of control. The statement, you make me mad, is not true. And by the way, if somebody's saying, you make me mad, please don't correct them mid-sentence. I will miss you. I'll bring flowers to your grave, but don't do that, okay? So, you make me so mad. No, they don't. You choose to be mad. You choose to be angry, so you've got to figure out, am I, am I angry? And, and you get to choose. How do I know? Because I grew up in a house where my brother and I were very close in age. And brothers that are close in age have a tendency to fight. So we'd be fighting. I mean, we were doing the full-on dusty roads, sleeper hold and everything, or trying to make the other one pass out and everything else, right? And, and mom or dad would walk in. And they would lose their minds. You kids, right now! And back in the old days, there was no caller ID. The phone just rang. And you never knew if it was grandma or a telemarketer. So you did something that we never do nowadays. You answered the phone. So you could be in full screamo mode. You kids better stop! Hello? Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, okay, well, yeah, well, we'll see you Friday. And you can't, right, okay. So, so you can control it. Most of you have not screamed at your boss, but you went home and screamed at your spouse. 
because you just can't control it. Yeah, you can. With people you care about. Number next, don't make friends with, with quick-tempered people or spend time with those who have bad tempers. And somebody said, but I'm married to them. Like, well, <laughs> I'm telling you to leave them. I'll tell you what, though, though, if they begin to be abusive, you can tell them, hey, hit the road, Jack. By the way, my mom in high school, when that song came out, had a good friend named Jack, who literally, right before that song came out, wife left him, told him to hit the road. And so, as she saw him every day, she saw, hey, Jack. Hit the road, Jack. And the number one song, number one song. I always feel bad for that guy. He had a happily ever after ending, but you know, there is. So, but if somebody's abusive, hey, hit the road, find some space. We'll talk about that. Number two. Not only do we remember anger, but we remember the cost of anger. I hope the gas illustration helped you. I hope the gas illustration helped you realize how serious anger is. A hot-tempered man gets into all kinds of trouble. All kinds of trouble. Here's a fallacy in some of the psychology. They're, they're starting to change this, and I'm glad. But they used to tell you that you had a bucket of anger. Like you got mad about something, you had a bucket... So you needed to go and release that bucket. So you needed to vent or punch or whatever, right? But here's what they've discovered. Anger leads to more anger. Because you don't have an anger bucket. You have an anger factory. And if you feed the anger factory, you know what happens? More anger. Whether it's anger against yourself or somebody else. The way that you think makes all the difference. Proverbs 15.8. People with quick tempers cause trouble, but those who control their tempers stop a quarrel. We all know somebody who has a quick temper. You call, say they have a short fuse. You, you, you talk about their anger. And you, or you say stay away from them. But we also all know people who bring calmness into relationships. They bring that calm spirit. There's something about them that in the worst situation they can say, it's going to be okay. And we all kind of go... Oh, okay, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Proverbs 14, 17. Patient people have great understanding. Full disclosure, I drove in Orlando yesterday. And what happens, I grew up in Miami, for those of you who don't know. I learned how to drive in Miami. So what happens to me in Orlando when people cut me off and try to keep me from getting over in a lane I need to get into... It's all of a sudden, my Miami driving skills kick in. And I am going to get in that lane whether you want me to or not, man. But you look out, I'm coming over. Maneuver. There we go. And uh, so, But let me tell you something I've learned about anger. So, you know, yesterday I had one of those look in the rearview mirror moments when I'm talking to the person behind me. They're not listening. I'm not sure why, but I'm like, dude, you really don't have to drive. So if you'll notice, there's a car in front of me and really... You give me just a little room, or, and that's what I wish I had, the thing you pull an oil slick or bananas or whatever to come, right? But I've gotten better. I just, you know, just so you know, I've gotten better. Neil doesn't think I'm a bad driver, but he doesn't really pay attention, so it's okay. All right, so, but your anger actually has a purpose. Anger gives you courage. Anger's like the wrestler. Remember you used to watch wrestling? Maybe you didn't, but if you never watched wrestling, here's what happened in wrestling. At some point in one of the matches, one of the, one of the bad guys does something illegal. He throws dirt in his face, or his buddy hits the guy with a chair from behind while the referee's looking at the sky, or whatever they're doing, right? And you, inside, you, you get mad, but the other thing you notice is all of a sudden, that guy who's getting beat up, he's down on the mat. The other guy does something illegal, and all of a sudden, that guy's anger rises up, and what does it create? Courage. Courage to defend himself against an enemy. So here's what happens when you're driving. You ready? You think those people are your enemies. And because you think that way, and it's not like you're thinking that way, like these people are all my enemies. But as soon as they cut you off, or cut in front of you, or don't let you in their lane, you start to think, they're trying to kill me. And so you respond in a way because you think they're trying to kill me. Patient people have great understanding. What does that mean? It means you realize that they're not really, well, hopefully, they're not really trying to kill you. And then it says, but people with quick tempers show their foolishness. So you have options. 
You, you don't have to get angry in traffic. Did you hear me, people? Are my people here today? Did you hear me? Because that's me. I'm driving in traffic, and you're trying to kill me, and I, so I'm going to kill you back. I don't know. That's very improper English, but you know? I just, I just want to get close to you. I just want to do what you did to me. I just want vengeance, right? Because why? Because we're afraid. That's the real emotion. Or we're, and so what happens? Our courage rises up. Or in some of our cases, let's be honest, our stupidity rises up. And so the thoughts we have are not, you're my friend. I made a mistake while driving this week. This is my fourth day without an incident. <laughs> so, driving home the other day, and um, I have to turn, get in the left lane pretty quick after I leave the office. So, but, make a long story short, I stayed in the right lane a little longer than I should have. And uh, went to get in the left lane. Did not see the Health First van. Did not see it was halfway in the health first lane. He was, I didn't see him in my rear view mirror. And apparently I was too lazy to turn my eye. Oh, I mean, I can see my hand. And I was too lazy to go, there's a car next to me. And I went into his lane, into it. I don't have the car that says, hey, doofus, get over. By the way, I think they should do that instead of beeping. They should just yell at you. You should be able to choose like Uncle Mike. Be like Uncle Mike, right? And yell at you. So I'm halfway in the lane and I realize, and he honks. And I'm like, oh, dude, sorry, I'm sorry. So, so, right? And I'm like, I'm that guy. I'm that guy who's trying to kill the health first guy. The van is huge. The guy, I can, I can hear the guy. I can hear the guy because this is what I would say. Dude, do you not see my huge van? It's like twice the size of your car. It says health first on the side. I've been right next to you. Of course, the, my first thought was, dude, why'd you get right next to me? I couldn't see you in my mirror. Right? Right? Because I'm right. Humility. A little humility. So I did the humble wave. You ever done the humble wave? That's the I repent. That's the, that's the national... I don't know if it works in other countries, but here, that is the, if, you, if you're from a foreign country, this might help you out. This is the national... I repent. I'm really sorry. I bow at your superior driving, and I am. I now remove my crown, place it on your head for superior driving to my idiocy. But we tend to think we're the best drivers. So because we get arrogant, we get prideful, we think other people are trying to kill us, that anger, that pride, that fear rises up, and we feel under attack. So what do we do when we're under attack? We attack back. It's the same thing when you get in a fight. It's the same thing when you think you're right and they're wrong. That pride rises up. Now here's the worst one. Proverbs 11:29. This is from the Living Bible. The fool who provokes his family to anger tries to push their buttons, keeps harassing his children, keeps using sarcasm until they break. To anger and resentment will finally, listen, have nothing worthwhile left. Most of us have a friend who we love and care about, but we watch them destroy relationship after relationship because of their anger. Do not pour gasoline on your relationships with anger. All of you can remember something your parents said. out of You may have had a parent that was so wonderful, but in anger they lost it, and you remember to this day some of you, 20, 30, 50 years later, you remember that outburst of anger to this day. <clears throat> to this day. I mean, listen, all of us, if somebody's 99% nice and 1% angry all the time, you're still not going to want to hang around them. Because that 1% is enough to burn the grass. Leave me alone. Number next. Not only recognize, not only remember the cost, but reflect, don't react. This is so much easier to say than do. A man's wisdom gives him patience. So the old saying, count to ten, is not a bad idea. Or take a walk, take a break. Hey, hey, if the keyboard keys hurt, 
when you're answering on Facebook and your face is turning red as you respond and your eyes are bulging out of your head and there's a vein popping out of your neck. Ah, don't send it. Don't send it. I don't care if you think you're right. You are right. I had a guy sent uh, publicly post on my wall what a bad pastor I was one day. And he said why. And, uh, and he put it there. And it, it's probably right. I just, I should have just said, you're right. I'm horrible. And that would probably would have been the best to diffuse the anger. Just, okay. You know, but on my wall, on my wall. So what did he do? Right? He came into my lane. <laughs> yeah, post on your wall how bad I am, but don't post on my wall how bad I am, right? So, so he posted, and oh, I came up with a rip, and I started. Oh, look up a couple verses. Oh, look what Jesus said. Jesus said. <laughs> but that's too high, so let's go lower. So Jesus said, and Paul said, Timothy said, you know, in the Greek, in the Hebrew, do you hear the keys right away? If your family can hear the keys, don't send it. <laughs> I, I had a blistering response. I mean, guys, King Eric had shown up. All of the squirrels got together on this project. They said, they said we will defeat the enemy with our superior squirrel intelligence. We will come up with verses in Hebrew and Greek. You got to come here, look what I'm writing back. Look what I'm writing back. Am I kidding? You know, Kyle. <laughs> you, you know, Dad, he's just an idiot, right? I know. <laughs> Only problem is that I'm a Christian. So every once in a while before I hit send, God goes, <clears throat> hey, uh, how you feeling there, uh, Brookins? <laughs> Vindictive! <laughs> Justified! Prideful! Really smart! Feeling really smart! And really wrong! Really wrong. This is gonna make him feel really stupid. But that's how he made me feel, so I should make him. No, I shouldn't return evil for. The whole of evil for evil, so I shouldn't print that verse. I can just delete it off my wall, but that's no fun. I want other people to see how smart I am. I mean, a few of my friends already thumbs it up, said he's stupid. There were, there were people loving his comment. I, come on, just let me put this in. I don't know why I'm talking to Jesus here. But, yeah. Don't send it. So I didn't send it. And guess what I did? I deleted it. Delete. That's not nearly as satisfying as it's not. <laughs> Unfriend him. Ha <laughs> ha, that was great. Unfriend. <laughs> not right on my wall anymore. I don't think that was out of anger. <laughs> don't send it. Here's a little verse to help you. Maybe put this on your keyboard. Put keys instead of tongue. Lord, help me control my tongue. Listen, help me be careful about what I say. Now listen to this word, careful. I remember driving Kyle from, from the hospital. Kyle's first child, 9.9 .9 pounds. Yeah, at least it wasn't tons. Anyway, so 9.9. .9, yeah, somebody says, ouch, I love that. Okay, so driving him home, I'll never forget, West Palm Beach. We lived about two miles from the hospital. Put Kyle in the car. I went and got help. To put the to put the car seat in because I want to make sure I didn't put it I put it in the middle in the middle I reached over because just in case side impact we were gonna make sure that he was not gonna get hit if I could have I would have put a roll cage just around his car seat <laughs> backwards facing of course you know had a nurse come and help help is that how's that is that good I shouldn't have kids yet twenty what's the deal come on help me out right so twenty three okay so. Drive home. <laughs> Drive home. Car behind me. Oh, you can pass. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm going like eight miles an hour all the way home. Like eight. Like eight. Like I get up to eight. Like, oh, that's too fast. You got to slow down. 
Yeah, I'm almost like. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. There's actually a picture. But then, but then when I had my third child, you see me carrying him in like this. <laughs> I got to hang in there. So they'll be all right. There you go. All right. So, right. The first child. Right. First child. Lion King. That was Lion King. Okay. What happened? I was careful. Are you careful with your relationships? Are they precious to you? You're careful with what's precious to you. So if you're angry and you respond in anger, you're not careful. And if you're not careful, then you don't value that person. So just own it. Just own it, deal with it, and start valuing them. Some of you just need to pretend your spouse is your boss. <laughs> in some of your cases, it's true. I don't know. <laughs> Ordering you around, I get it. Okay. Here's a bad one, Proverbs 20, verse 1. Wine and beer make people loud and uncontrolled. That's the reason I don't need wine and beer. I do this naturally. <laughs> it is not wise to get drunk on them. All of us have a friend who's a great person to wine and beer. Feel free to give them this verse. Hey, dude, I just, my pastor said this verse this morning. Here you go. <laughs> so three questions when you're dealing with anger. What are my real feelings? In the car, what are my real feelings? That person's trying to kill me. I'm better driver than they are, you know. What do I think this anger will get me? How can I slow down so I don't hurt others? For some of us, if we just slow down. Thankfully, it takes a little longer to type. But not long enough. Number four, release my anger appropriately. When you're angry, do not sin. So that means you're going to get angry, but don't sin. And be sure not to stop being angry before the end of the day. Don't give the devil a way to defeat you. Do you mind if I go over a couple minutes today? If you need to leave, you can leave. Exercise will give you time to think. So some of you, the best thing you can do is take a walk. Some of you, the best thing you can do is tell your spouse, um, why don't you just walk around or take a drive? Go out in the backyard. <laughs> some of you need to do that for yourself. Why? Because you need to think about the right things. What happens is if you have somebody who hurt you, some of you are angry from something that happened years ago, and what you're doing is you're creating that, remember we talked about that factory, and you keep bringing that person, that person may not be in your life anymore, but you keep allowing them back in. They don't even remember you, and you're angry still, and they haven't thought of you in years. Some of them have passed away, and you're still angry about something they did. Hey, quit keeping them alive. You're giving them CPR. You're bringing Frankenstein in. People who aren't even in your life anymore, you keep bringing back in. So here's a little thing that will help you. I learned this years ago. Here it is. Ready? When you begin to think about somebody hurtful, change your mind and think about somebody who blessed you. And give thanks for that person. And if that didn't work, do it again. And if that didn't work, do it again. And keep doing it until you run out of people. What will happen is you'll quit bringing that person back to life and you'll quit allowing your anger to grow. And you'll begin to let them go. A gentle answer will calm a person's anger, but an unkind answer will cause more anger. Some of you, all you need to do in conversation is learn to do this. I'm really good at this in conversation, aren't I, Cherie? Half the time I'm talking to Cherie, I'm like, hey, Cherie, what can we? And she's like, and I'm like, oh, sorry. How are you today? If you didn't know, Cherie my secretary in the office. So I just like, I don't know. By the way, if you need help, there's an anger workbook by a guy named Minerit. It will help you a ton. Google it, Amazon Prime it, two days. So not only recognize anger, remember the cost, reflect, release, reprogram with humility and grace. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. You know what that means? Be humble. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So here's the deal. If you've got somebody you're angry at, maybe it's somebody you've been angry at for you. Imagine yourself coming before God and saying, God, this is not my deal. Please deal with them. I release them to you. Paul even said at one point he did that. He said he actually released them to Satan, which I thought was funny. But, but you just say, God, God, you take care of them. God, you take care of them. Number six, last but not least, rely on God's help. 
If you really struggle with anger and self-centeredness, have you ever really said, God, I need your help? Did you, did you really mean it? Because if you go to God and you say, God, you show me when I'm angry, trust me, the Holy Spirit will begin going, <clears throat> you know that email you're about to send? You'll get the, you'll get the, you know, the warning we get for the weather. Beep, beep, beep. You'll be in the middle of a conversation. You'll feel that eyebrow twitching, the vein. And the Holy Spirit will say, that's anger. Why are you angry? And God will begin to help you. Patience and encouragement come from God. I pray that God will help you all agree with each other the way Christ Jesus wants. And then Galatians 5.22, one of the fruits of the Spirit is patience. Patience diffuses anger. Love diffuses anger. Understanding other people diffuses anger. Just like grass, you have to cultivate relationships or they will die. But if you cultivate it all you want, but if you let anger dominate or let anger even be a part, you will destroy it. But here's the deal. If today I poured gas on my lawn, I would go back. I would take a shovel. I would get rid of all the dirt. I would get rid of all of that and I would get new grass and plant it. It would be a lot of work, but it would be worth it. Those of you who've responded in anger for you to fix what you have destroyed takes a lot of work. It's not easy. It's difficult work. But do the work. Because those precious people next to you, those people that matter and are valuable, be careful with them and love them. The first way to recognize and receive God's grace is to give your life to Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you've never given your life to him, I want to encourage you today to say, Jesus, I need you. As I listen to a message about anger, I can't do it. I can't do it on my own. God, I'm a sinner. I'm messed up. But you died for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiveness. And you surrender. I surrender my life to you, Lord. I want to live for you from now on. If you're here today and you're a Christian and you struggle with anger, I want you to begin to say, God, I need help. Would you first of all remind me? Maybe you need to get an accountability partner that you can begin to talk to. Maybe you need to get a counselor. I mean, it's bad. And say, I, I really need some help. And begin walking through those steps so you can grow in love. So that when people get around you, instead of dying, they grow. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, I thank you for this time. Lord, I know you want us to respond to anger the right way. It's so difficult sometimes, Father, because we just react. But Lord, you said that you would give us your peace. Father, you said that you, one of the fruits of the Spirit, is patience. So, Lord, help us to walk in patience and love. Father, some of us are angry just by habit. We've learned it naturally from our parents or from a friend. And so, Father, we release that to you. We pray that you would break those strongholds and give us your love and your grace for others. Father, for that one here who doesn't know you, I pray today would be the day they surrender to you. Father, for that one struggling with anger, I pray that you'd begin working in their heart this difficult work of digging up that anger and replanting it with your grace. Father, thank you for this time. I pray you'd bless this offering as we give. Continue to bless our church as you've been doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Have our time of giving now. If you need prayer or you want to talk about um, your salvation or something, I'd love to talk to you after the service. I'll be here. Have a great song to close our service. You'll love this one.